There's a phrase you hear a lot at the poker table, sometimes from recreational players, sometimes even from seasoned ones. The cards don't matter. It's how you play them. It sounds bold, philosophical, almost profound. But is it true? I want to take you back to a cash game I played at the Bow, because what happened there says everything you need to know about this question. I'm playing a typical $1, $3 no limit hold'em cash game. The player in seat 7 is out of control. He's raising almost every hand, bluffing constantly, and just lighting money on fire. He dumps $500 in minutes, reloads for $800, burns through that, and buys in again for another $500. At some point, he makes a comment about another player's hand. I don't remember exactly what he said, but I chimed in and said something about the quality of hands he's been playing. That's when he fired back with, the cards don't matter. I said, of course the cards matter. If they don't, why are you losing? Then I followed with a question that really stopped the table for a second. If the cards don't matter, why aren't you winning every hand? He just looked at me and shrugged as he was saying, the cards don't matter. It's how you play them that counts. A few hands later, I pick up pocket kings. I raise, he calls. I flop a set, bet the turn, he calls. I bet the river, he goes all in. I call. He doesn't show. He just mucks and stands up. As he's leaving the table, I said, See? The cards matter. He shook his head again. No, they don't. I told him. I'm going to write an article about this. He laughed and said, Let me know when it's up. I want to read it. It's up now. And this video is going to walk you through why that idea that the cards don't matter isn't just wrong. It's dangerous. To be fair, I don't think the guy at the bow was trying to be a philosopher. What he meant was something more like, poker isn't about the cards, it's about people. And on the surface, that sounds smart. After all, reading opponents, picking up on tells, and spotting emotional patterns are all part of winning poker. Anyone who's played live for long knows that psychology matters. But here's the problem. He took a partial truth and tried to turn it into a complete strategy. Yes, poker is about people, but it's also about probabilities. It's about understanding risk, equity, and expected value. It's about calculating what your hand is worth, what your opponent might be holding, and how the board is likely to change that. And none of that is possible if you ignore the cards, literally or figuratively. If you reject the structure of the game, you're not playing poker. You're performing. You're gambling. You're improvising in a game that punishes guesswork. That's what this guy didn't understand. He thought bluffing was everything. That if he could just keep opponents off balance, talking, raising, needling, he could win without ever needing a real hand. And sometimes, he probably did win that way. But only until someone decided to call him down and remind him that the cards still matter. So let's step back and look at this logically. If the cards truly didn't matter, then you could win with any two cards at any time. Pre-flop hand selection wouldn't exist. Pot odds would be irrelevant. You wouldn't care if you had pocket aces or seven deuce off suit. They'd all be just cards, but that's not reality. In fact, every serious study, strategy guide, and mathematical model ever created for poker begins with one basic truth. The strength of your hand directly impacts your chances of winning the pot. This isn't just opinion, it's math. Pocket aces are an 82% favorite over random hands pre-flop. Drawing hands only complete a certain percentage of the time. Marginal hands like 9-6 suited look appealing, but lose money over time. Trash hands like jack-4 offsuit are negative EV from every position. Every winning player, whether they admit it or not, uses this structure. They might say they're playing feel-based poker, but subconsciously, they're still folding 7-deuce and playing ace-king. That's not instinct. That's math in disguise. Even the most aggressive, image-driven players don't ignore hand strength. They just disguise it under table talk and creative lines. So, if we're being honest, the cards absolutely matter. Not just in some hands. Not just when it's convenient. They matter on every street, in every decision, from pre-flop to river. Because when you stop respecting the cards, you stop playing poker. And poker, by its very structure, demands respect for form. If you still think the cards don't matter, I want you to consider this. What is the foundation of GTO, Game Theory Optimal Play? The most mathematically advanced, balanced, unexploitable poker strategy ever developed? It's not based on feel. It's not based on instinct. 
It's based on combinatorics, hand frequencies, equity distributions, and probability trees. Solvers like PO Solver, Simple GTO, and GTO Plus simulate millions of possible hands, not to read your emotions, but to break down which cards show up, how often, and how they perform across ranges. And when AI systems like Libratus and Pluribus beat Elite Pros, they didn't do it by bluffing with nothing and hoping for the best. They did it by playing better ranges, understanding board textures, applying pressure at mathematically precise frequencies, all derived from the structure of the cards. Let's be crystal clear. No solvers without card math. No equity charts without hand strength. No balanced ranges if the cards didn't matter. If you remove the structure of the cards, the entire GTO ecosystem collapses. There's nothing to solve. No hand trees to build. No frequencies to calculate. Just chaos. The idea that the cards don't matter isn't just wrong. It's a category error. It's a misunderstanding of how poker works at its most fundamental level. And beyond being logically flawed, it's also a kind of philosophical trap, which leads us directly into our next topic, the difference between romantic thinking and classical thinking. So why do some players cling to the idea that the cards don't matter? It's not just a misunderstanding of math. It's a deeper way of seeing the world. In Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Robert Persig explains the divide between two mindsets, the romantic mindset, which focuses on appearances, emotions, and intuition, the classical mindset, which looks beneath the surface to understand structure, logic, and form. In poker terms, the romantic player wants to feel their way through a hand. They trust their gut. They think they can just tell when someone's bluffing. The classical player seeks to understand the mechanics. They break down ranges, calculate pot odds, and look for long-term edges. Now here's the irony. Romantic players often think they're freer, more creative, more instinctual, more in tune with the moment. But without understanding the structure of the game, their freedom is an illusion. It's like trying to improvise jazz without first learning the scales. You're not playing with mastery, you're just guessing. And eventually, poker punishes guesswork. The classical player, on the other hand, builds their freedom on discipline. They master the form first, and then they can break from it with intention, not ego. The statement, the cards don't matter, is not freedom. It's the ego seeking liberation through denial, rather than through discipline. And denial in poker doesn't lead to brilliance. It leads to leaks. It leads to misreads. It leads to frustration disguised as variance. If you want to rise above the table, you have to start with what the game is, not what you wish it were. In a recent live stream, I had the privilege of speaking with Zachary Elwood, the world's leading expert on poker tells and poker psychology. If there's anyone who could make the case that poker is just about reading people, it's him. So I asked him, point blank, in a game like the one I played at the Bow, where players are overaggressive, constantly bluffing, and say things like, the cards don't matter, how much of poker is really about psychology versus math? Zachary didn't hesitate. He said math and structure outweigh psychology by a wide margin. Yes, reading players helps. Yes, tells exist. But they're not the foundation of the game. The structure is the cards. The strategy is the math. The reads are the refinement. And if someone like Zachary Elwood says that someone who has dedicated his career to the psychology of poker, that should tell you something. He wasn't minimizing his own field. He was putting it in the proper context. You don't build your game on psychology. You build it on logic and then enhance it with psychology. That's how real poker works. So what does all this mean practically for you as a serious poker player? It means your priorities must align with realistic poker strategy. If you want to become a winning player, you can't build your strategy around instinct, bravado, or psychology. You have to start with the structure of the game, the cards, the math, the rules, and the probabilities. That's the foundation. You wouldn't build a house by choosing the curtains first. You'd start with the framing, the materials that hold the whole thing up. Poker's the same way. The real hierarchy of tools in poker looks like this. One, structure, meaning the card's hand strength, pot odds, equity, position, and stack depth. Two, tactics, including bet sizing, pressure points, fold equity. Three, psychology, which is your image, manipulation, tilt control, and tells. Four, style, meaning how you express your strategy at the table, tight aggressive, loose passive, etc. 
Too many players flip this upside down. They want to read faces, but don't know what pot odds are. They want to bluff with heart, but have no sense of their actual equity. They chase psychology, but forget probability. And poker punishes that. Yes, psychology and instinct matter, but they're built on top of math and structure. You use psychology to refine good decisions, not to replace them. If you ignore the foundational tools or use them out of order, you're not strategizing, you're gambling. And if you want to move beyond hope-based poker, you have to respect the game's architecture. Because at its core, poker has structure. And the cards are the form on which everything else is built. The cards do matter. Not just because they determine who wins the pot, but because they define the structure of the game itself. Yes, poker is about timing, intuition, and psychology. But none of that works unless it's built on a foundation of math, logic, and form. So build your game from the ground up. Master the structure, and then bring your instincts to the table. This video was a recap of the full article, Do the Cards Matter in Poker? Available now at PokerRailbird.com. The link is in the description below. If you found this helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with your thoughts. Do you think the cards matter? This is Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the tables.